Sometimes the only thing that's more fun than playing Warhammer is complaining about Warhammer. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're doing a bit more of a discussion related video just to discuss saltiness, bitterness and negativity within the 40k community. Certainly a bit of a charged topic, but at least in the realms of the internet it's hard to deny that Games Workshop attract a fair bit of ire for virtually every move they make, whether it's new models, releases, prices or rules imbalances. In the video we'll talk a bit about what it means to be salty for Games Workshop, what sort of their moves can cause it, why it seems to be quite so prevalent in reactions online, and some of the negatives and positives of people being dissatisfied with what Games Workshop does. Quite a big topic this one, so if I miss anything or you think that I've got anything wrong, let me know down in the comments. So just so we're speaking on the same terms, generally I'd say in the context of Warhammer 40k, it's being a little bit upset, angry or bitter over something. Not necessarily full-blown anger, but more being incredibly dissatisfied and annoyed. You don't have to look far to find it. On virtually any post that Games Workshop makes on social media, you'll find a fair amount of people criticising them for one thing or another. Never mind on the content of people who are a bit more free to say what they want. Or you certainly might see a storm of negativity towards Games Workshop in the comments. I would say that being very bitter and annoyed is a bit more common online than in person. Generally most people who think a release is merely fine, maybe we won't really be all that likely to bother to write anything in response. If it's really annoyed you though, maybe you'll be motivated to. Plus in places like YouTube or on forums, the anonymity might make you a bit more or less restrained to voice exactly what's on your mind with no fear of getting a bad rep or any repercussions. I would argue that Games Workshop is perhaps doing a bit better than they were several years back, but that still doesn't mean that there's not valid reason to criticise them from all manner of different angles. The balance of game rules and the fact that quite a lot of armies have it far easier than others to win, the speed and order of rules updates, which factions get addressed first, any new model that they release can be a scope for criticism. Some people might hate the looks or the way that they've updated certain things, and there's always the perpetual annoyance of when Space Marines get yet more releases, yet other factions are untouched. I think we'd have a long time of no Marines being released at all before that sentiment goes away. When they do release things, often people will find them very expensive for just a few bits of plastic, and also when they monkey with established setting and backstory, such as when they release the Primaris Space Marines, that generated them no end of ire from people who didn't like the change to the backstory, even if in general the models were fairly well received. Generally it tends to be one of the above, with the accompanying feeling that Games Workshop is making a mistake in some way, and things could be so much better for the player base if they did things differently. It's pretty frustrating when you see a company make a dumb decision despite all of their resources and manpower, particularly when it's something that could easily be rectified with a few changes. In general though, I think the root cause of saltiness does come from genuine affection for the game. Fans can get ridiculously invested in Warhammer 40k, I'm certainly one of them, whether you enjoy the tabletop game, the art form of painting, or the endless depth of the 41st millennium's universe. People aren't going to be annoyed if something that they don't really care about changes, but if you start monkeying with a system that people really love, the people who aren't happy are really going to feel it, and they're really going to express it. On top of just love for the hobby, most players will have sunk a significant amount of investment into the game. Even on purely financial terms, getting a 40k army up and running does cost a fair bit of money, so it's understandable if people pay for some fancy models, and then say game balance changes, the models that they bought are left being nowhere near as good in game, or they've heavily invested into a faction that hasn't got any sort of meaningful release in years. As well as the pure financial investment, there's also the investment in time, effort and hobby hours, all sunk into learning the game, perfecting how you play it, and developing your painting and hobby skills. Often it seems that even the people who are utterly disenfranchised with 40k, people who say have hated every move that Games Workshop has done since the start of 8th edition, they still tend to stick around to some extent. I think that 40k as a hobby is kind of addictive, it can be genuinely quite hard to break free from and move on, maybe partly because of all the investment that you've put into it, and also maybe making some good friends and connections through the hobby that you might not see quite as much of if you did just make a clean break and stopped playing Warhammer. I think that might be part of the reason that you often get these disenfranchised hobby veterans hanging around forums and things, not having played the game in a long time, but still continuing to post criticism of Games Workshop as they see yet more things about the hobby that they don't like. Now I'm absolutely certainly not saying that there's not good reason to be salty against Games Workshop for certain problems, and there are some major positives which we'll get onto in a second. I do think though that there are some downsides when the community gets very negative for a very long period of time. 
Firstly, I do think that there tends to be a bit of community bias towards focusing on the negatives and the things that you could see that could be improved. And while I admit that 40k has flaws that you can criticise on all sides, I would also say that in the past, Warhammer and 40k in general had far more big flaws to criticise than it does today. Games Workshop used to be far more of an implacable monolith that never reached out or engaged with the community, defended its IP even more zealously with lawsuits and cease and desist letters, never bothered to update rules, issue FAQs, or try and balance the game in any sense whatsoever between codexes, and also didn't really take into account much community feedback when releasing new models and what people would like to see. I'm not saying that they couldn't still make progress on all these fronts, but I think that they have made progress since maybe 5 or 10 years back. I feel that there will always be some dissatisfied people out there, as people want very different things from the hobby, and no matter what move Games Workshop makes, they're going to annoy some people. I often find when the community is going to town on Games Workshop for one thing or another, I often struggle to think how they might have done that move better, and I kind of struggle to think of a way that might have pleased people better. I think that excessive saltiness can also make the community feel a bit negative and uninviting. Sometimes I do kind of wonder what a new player to the game might think if they just go onto a forum post or a YouTube video, I see a whole load of people just raging into the keyboard. It might make you just take a second look at the hobby if all you really want to do is casually push some space marines around. And I think that when salt overflows from the internet and you are playing a game against someone, I think it is important not to be too bitter about things. Sure, we all know that the game isn't balanced and Games Workshop could do better, but you can definitely go too far on the complaining side. It's not going to be much fun to play someone who's constantly moaning about how their army is subpar, and Games Workshop makes a lot of things OP. There's often going to be an element of truth to that, but when you're actually in-game, I would try and focus on making sure that the experience is enjoyable for both players, and if you fancy laying into game balance issues, and I'd also try and do it in a way that's still fun. Talking of which, though... Talking of which, though, I certainly don't think that a bit of negativity is really all that much a bad thing. It certainly can be kind of fun to poke fun at Games Workshop, and I've done so myself on the channel a few times before. Maybe my single saltiest video will be that Games Workshop sales tactics one, which you can give a search to if you'd like. I certainly don't think that we should be brushing any legitimate criticisms under the rug. It does help keep the community better informed about issues with the game, and that's generally going to be a good thing rather than going in blindly. On top of that, though, I think that saltiness and dissatisfaction are maybe one of our most powerful tools in giving Games Workshop feedback. If we are talking about Warhammer as a hobby, as opposed to just general tabletop games, Games Workshop is essentially a company that owns a monopoly. If we just blindly consume literally everything that they do, without offering any sort of resistance, then they really have no motivation to stop standards from slipping, giving us worse game balance, model releases that we aren't as interested in, and jacking up the prices over and over again. I believe that this was what was happening when Games Workshop was in its monolithic no communication type phase. They were basically ignoring the fan base altogether, releasing what they liked. The game was about as unbalanced as you could possibly get, and they only started to buck their ideas up and start to take notice again when dissatisfaction had reached such high levels that it started to actually eat into their sales, and a lot of people started abandoning Warhammer for good. I personally hope that they will keep from slipping back into old ways, respond to any saltiness and negativity, and take it on board as criticism, and try and keep as much of their community as happy as possible. I think that generally that's going to be a good idea for the longevity of the game, and them continuing to make loads of money far into the future, as opposed to just adopting less helpful practices, chasing short-term sales. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed a bit of a discussion around salt and negativity in Warhammer 40k. I think it both definitely has its downsides, but also has really useful function to us as a community as well. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll certainly look forward to reading them. I'm sure I've missed a bunch of interesting things that I could have mentioned in the video. If you've enjoyed the discussion, feel free to subscribe to Orspets Tactics, and I'll certainly keep the Warhammer 40k videos coming, with new videos coming out pretty much every single day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the content on the channel, I would just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, and that's the thing that supports me making videos into the future. Making daily content does take an enormous amount of time, and if you'd like to help keep it coming, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, things like voting to see what happens next on the channel, your name in the credits if you'd like it, and also automatic entry into the monthly channel prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.